To my beloved brethren and God's holy people across the globe, welcome to another program in the series, A Word to the Nation broadcast. I am Pastor Carol Wilson, your humble servant, and I encourage you to spare a few minutes out of your busy schedule and allow the Lord to speak to your hearts. Success and prosperity are trending. People in many countries across the globe at every level of society are seeking for success and prosperity. Many persons are prepared to even do what is wrong and dishonest in order to achieve these. Good morning and happy Sabbath to all. Today's theme, the secret to success and prosperity. Our scripture reading for today comes to us from Joshua 1 reading verses 7 and 8. Above all, be strong and very courageous to observe carefully the old instruction my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you will have success wherever you go. This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. The first error mankind has made and continues to make is to place his priority going after the carnal things of earth instead of securing his soul in the Lord. The scriptures warn us against becoming anxious about our material needs, our food and our clothes. Instead, we ought to be appreciative and thankful for life which is a greater blessing than food. Because if one was not blessed with life, it would not matter how much food one has. It would be of no benefit without the presence of life. Therefore, if you have life, even if you have nothing to eat, you should be thankful. Similarly, we should not become depressed that we do not have clothes to cover our bodies. The fact that you have a body, even if you have no clothes, is a greater blessing. Many persons who were once alive had for themselves more clothing than anyone would need in a lifetime. The fact that they are now dead means that they would no more have a living body and so all the clothes they had would be of no use to them anymore. In the meantime, you might be alive yet naked. You would have the greater blessing because it is better to have a naked body and no clothes than to have a dead body and all the clothes in the world. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 4 says, but there is hope for whoever is joined with all the living, since a living dog is better than a dead lion. Matthew 6, 26-33 says, Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the flowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin threads. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor 
was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. I might not have enough time to elaborate on most of the scriptures I quote, but then they are usually straightforward in their understanding, especially when read from a modern English translation. So I encourage you to make note of them and read them on your own. They will be of much benefit to you. So Matthew is saying in verse 33 that your priority should be seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then the prosperity and success you are in need of will be added. This is indeed the secret to success and prosperity. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When Solomon ascended the throne of his father David in 2 Chronicles 1, 7 to 12, that night God appeared to Solomon and asked him, what should I give you? And Solomon said to God, you have shown great and faithful love to my father David, and you have made me king in his place. Lord God, let your promise to my father David now come true. For you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Now grant me wisdom and knowledge so that I may lead these people. For who can judge this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, Since this was in your heart, and you have not requested riches, wealth, or glory, or for the life of those who hate you, and you have not even requested long life, but you have requested for yourself wisdom and knowledge, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are given to you. I will also give you riches, wealth, and glory. Unlike what was given to the kings who were before you or will be given to those after you. This is what happens when you put God and his purpose as the priority in your life. Solomon sought to obtain wisdom and knowledge to lead his people. Along with his selfless request, God added riches, wealth, and glory. The scripture reading states that God instructed Joshua, who was Moses' successor, that at the top of his list of priorities, he should be resilient, brave, and walk in obedience to the instructions given. God's word should not depart from his mouth. He should meditate on it day and night so that he would be diligent to put in practice everything that is written therein. For in doing so, he would guarantee success and prosperity. So there, my friends, putting God first, knowing his words, meditating on them day and night, and diligently walking in obedience to them is the secret to success and prosperity. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today for a Word to the Nation broadcast, B069. This is your brother and friend, Carol Wilson, saying, Have a happy Sabbath, a fantastic day, and may the God of heaven bless you real good. Peace and love to you all.